What's up everybody, I'm Josh Meek, the Uber Geek. I'm here in Pretty Dece headquarters. Uh, got something a little bit different for you than usual. Obviously we play magic sometimes on the channel. Today we are going to be working on building a magic deck together. Uh, my friends and I have started a magic sealed league. So just for fun, just between, uh, just between a group of friends here, we are starting a Ravnica Allegiance sealed league. We are a week into it thus far. Basically the gist is you start with six packs of Ravnica Allegiance. You build the best 40 card deck that you can. And each week as you go, you get to add one pack of cards to your card pool to improve your deck. So in my first round, my first card pool, things weren't so great. I had some okay cards, but nothing really lined up and, and pushed me into a, a two color pair, a specific guild. I ended up playing three colors. So now I've got my new pack of cards and really hoping to get into two colors, get out of playing three colors, which is not where I wanna be in limited without any uh, real proper fixing outside of guild gates or anything like that. So we're gonna look at our cards. We're gonna see what we have and see if we can figure out a good two color deck to play that can use the most of our rares as we possibly can in those two colors. So we'll switch over and take a look at the cards now and work together to build this deck. Okay, so we're here and we are deck building for this Magic Slow Grow Sealed League. Now we started with six packs and in my initial pool I didn't feel like I really had enough playables in any two colors. So I ended up playing a Jund deck. I went full three colors and obviously having some, some land issues there. It's not really ideal to play three colors in limited formats if you can help it, uh, especially if that third color is not a splash. You're not splashing for any important, you're playing the full three, which I was doing. So now as we move on in league, we are adding packs as weeks go by. So we've got a new pack of cards. I'm really hoping that I can figure out a two color deck now from my larger pool of cards, cut out a third color and kind of see what I can do in one of the normal guilds of Ravnica. So I've got the pack that I added right here. So we'll go through the cards and see what we have and see if anything really jumps out at us. So first up we have a Gift of Strength, which is, is a strong magic card. Um, if you're playing green, it probably makes the cut. Uh, Savage Smash is our next card, which is one of the best commons, I think, in Ravnica Allegiance. Um, on, on the surface, it's it's similar to a card like Gift of Strength, but just the crazy swings, oftentimes you can fight something, so remove a blocker and then still swing in for like plus two power. It's it's crazy, this card is, is kind of nuts. Uh, but it is a gold card, so we'd be forced into red-green to play that. Uh, Arrester's Admonition, so bounce something back to a hand. Hazda Officer, not excited really to ever play the Hazda Officer. Uh, Thirsting Shade, so a little little one one life linker can uh, can get a little stronger as a mana sink. Act of Treason, always love Act of Treason. Probably not smart to put them in decks as often as I do, but they're they're super fun. Imperious Oligarch, so nice little afterlife vigilance human cleric. Watchful Giant is a card that I have, have really liked in Limited. Um, just can block for days, comes with a little human you can use as a chump blocker. You can also sacrifice it if you're playing Orzhov. So pretty cool card there in Watchful Giant. Then of course we have Burning Tree Vandal. Nice little, uh, little card sort of looter dude in red. Gateway Sneak, if you have the, the gates going on in your deck, I think Gateway Sneak is is pretty good. Carnival Carnage, so Carnival deals one damage to target creature or planeswalker, and Carnage is really what you wanna be casting most of the time, deals three damage to target opponent, and then that player discards two cards. That is pretty powerful. Cavalcade of Calamity. Uh, whenever a creature you can control power one or less attacks, deals one damage to the player or planeswalker that creature is attacking. This is not a card you really want to be running almost ever, I think, in, in this format. So that's probably not gonna make the cut. Our rare is Bedevil, which is, is pretty exciting. Destroy target artifact, creature, or planeswalker. We actually do have another Bedevil in the pool. 
We have a foil under City Scavenger. Everyone knows that in Limited, you uh, your foil cards definitely are more powerful than non-foil cards, so you always have to play the foils. Um, that's not true. Don't actually listen to that. And Azorius Guildgate to go with our other uh, gates and lands. So let's kind of run through what we had before. So we'll, we'll distribute these out to the piles here. I've, I've split things up by color. So add that there. Uh, add it to the pile of gold cards over here. Got red, more gold, some blue, red, white. I can't find white. There we go. And it's always good to kind of pull out the, the rares that you have as well, just to kind of see what you're working with as this goes. So uh, we definitely have the couple bedevils as far as gold cards go. So there's the one. We got a Tesa, which is pretty good. Bedevil. And this Thrash Threat. It's another rare there so we do have some pretty good uh stuff going on in gruel in red green let's see if we have any rares in the red pile quick little flip through nothing there and in white Nothing there. Plenty of creatures that I don't super care to be playing in white. That is for sure. Green, we've got some got some strong things, I think, going on in green. Soraform Hybron, of course, a fantastic card. Rule Beastmaster is uh, pretty great. Looking at black now, we got a Font of Agonies. Whenever you pay life, put that many blood counters on it. You can remove four blood counters and destroy target creature. Not really a card I don't think is going to do a ton in most limited, uh, you know, formats here. I don't think I don't think that's going to... You're not going to be removing too many blood counters, I don't think, because paying life is not a thing that comes up super often. Um, even in, you know, like you, you would have to build a constructed deck, I think, around that. We got a precognitive perception, which is... Not too bad at all. These are just our lockets here. And then as far as lands go, we did get a godless shrine. And that is it for lands. So kind of flipping through these, the thing that I'm initially seeing, just to put these back in, we, we do, we have a lot of gold rares. Um, and we are kind of being pulled into either gruel or Rakdos are the two things that I'm seeing. So the double Bedevil is um, a pretty strong reason to be to be Rakdos. Tesa I think is is a fun card. I don't know if she's amazing. Um, you'd really have to build around her. So I don't know that we necessarily have the pool to be able to pull that off. And we could even run Thrash. We if we wanted to, if we went Rakdos, we could play the the Thrash side. You know, on the red. We could even splash for the green if we were really looking to go that route. But I think that I think that I want to look at Rakdos, um, mainly on the back of these two copies of Bedevil that I want to be playing. So let's let's zero this in then. So let's kind of move some cards out of the way and just see what we can do in terms of of a a Rakdos deck. So uh, I guess first of all, let's see what lands we have for that. So. We do have a Rakdos Guildgate and another Rakdos Guildgate. So we've got two on-color Guildgates if we went that route. Um, we, we could we could splash for some colors here with our Gruul Guildgate, our Godless Shrine. So we could we could make that happen if we wanted to. But but two Rakdos Guildgates I think is a good is a good place to be. Now what other what other gold cards are we looking at? for Rakdos. So Carnival Carnage is going to be there. Uh, final payment would not be bad maybe to splash. Um, Rakdos roused about a Hackrobat. So not some not some bad things there. I'm liking that with the with of course final payment in mind as something that if we wanted to and go kind of really controlly, we could do. Uh, Hackerbat 
is nice kind of death touch uh, if, if you if you need to spectacle it out I, I like Rakdos Ra Ra Rakdos roused about excuse me um, again as a spectacle enabler if you have to just nice to fill out the curve again carnival carnage I think is is a pretty pretty decent card here carnage is is kind of backbreaking if you end up casting it we've got our double bedevils so see what we have in, in terms of black um, I don't want to play the Font of Agonies. I think Thirsting Shade is fine. Um, Undercity Scavenger, I think, is pretty good in this case. Carrying it, I would play that. Blood Mist Infiltrator, I'd play that. Good. Undercity's Embrace is 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 fine, I think, for what I want to be doing, especially in combination with a Bedevil. You can really get them to sacrifice something, something good. Blade Juggler, always a good card. We got a couple of those. Here's another Undercity's Embrace. So I think we can do we could do something here with our black. Um, Rectus Trumpeter is okay. Um, I don't you know, I'm not super excited about it, but it and Orzhov Enforcer. Orzhov Enforcer I think is is pretty strong. Death Touch and Afterlife, so you can use it to take out uh, a much larger threat and then end up with a spirit afterwards. I think that that's quite good. And yeah, it's not bad. So, so I like I like basically all of our black except for Font of Agonies, which I don't think we'll be playing. I'm gonna set that off to the side. So let's look at the red. So Act of Treason is fun. I don't know if it's amazing in this in this particular deck. Um, Scorch Mark always good. Put that in the in the play here. Um, let's see, Clamor Shaman. Uh, that's kind of nice. Just remove some remove some blockers. We'll put that in the, the pile right now. Goblin Gathering, I think we only have one of those. So we're definitely not going to play one Goblin Gathering. Here's our other Act of Treason. What else do we have here? We got two Cavalcade of Calamities, which, again, we're not going to be playing that card. That's just not, not good. Um... I don't think I love the Smelt World Ward Ingus. Um, most of the time, if you're stealing things that you see here, you're gonna wanna be stealing things that are stronger than three power. Three power less does cover a lot of the cards in this format, believe it or not. Like like a lot of the creatures are going to be three power or less. Um, but I think it just comes out as a bit too much of a cost and, and I'd rather be playing something like an Act of Treason to grab something sort of all the time, you know, you, you don't even get the benefit of doing it at instant speed because uh, the, the the Ignis here requires that you cast it as a sorcery. So that's kind of out. Um, Fermak is not not my favorite. We have two defaces, uh, artifact or creature with defender. Um, good sideboard card, you know, as those come up. I don't think we'll be running any of those main board more than likely. Uh, let's read Flames of the Raise War. It's not a card I'm super familiar with here. So, deals four damage to target creature and opponent controls. Then Flames of the Raise War deals two damage to each other creature that player controls if you control a creature with power of four or greater. Six mana, but uh, a four damage to a creature and then potentially more after that. Put that in the, the maybe pile. I think I think our controly build we're trying to to put together here is not it's not the worst thing that's ever happened. Uh, I do really like Gore Clan Wrecker, just hard to block most of the time because of menace. Put that there. We got double storm strike, so we could really we can really start tricking them, you know, with uh, Gore Clan Wrecker. They try to finally set up a double block, and then boom, we we give it first strike. Uh, that seems that seems pretty fun and and gross. So I don't know if we run both of those, but I'll put I'll put them in the thing now. Rebel reading is, you know, not great. You normally don't want to go down the, the land destruction route. And I think Burning Tree Vandal is uh, is not bad in the list as well. I'm usually not super excited about playing Spike Wheel Acrobat just because you're, you're paying, you know, potentially four mana if you're not able to spectacle it out. And this thing, you know, uh, trades with with two mana cards it, it's the five power is great but the two toughness just really means that it dies to pretty much anything um and, and it doesn't bring anything else to the table aside from that so that's probably out 
Rebel Reading, we said, was out. Feromaka, again, I'd rather not play it, but it's fine as a, as a bear, as a curve filler if we need to. So that's kind of where we're sitting as far as things that I liked from flipping through those colors. So let's just kind of see where we're at, just, just sheer numbers. So one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So we uh, are pretty close to where we wanna be in terms of numbers. Um, who knows if that fits to a curve or anything like that. We'd basically be cutting one card from, from this current pile. So let's dive even further. Let's kind of lay out creatures versus spells and a bit of a curve maybe. So three, we got some ones here. Here is a fours. We got uh, six man over here. Uh, threes. Scorch mark is a two in the spell realm. Uh, two creature, two creature. I'm going to count Blade Juggler as three. I'm, I'm going to hope to be casting it for its spectacle most of the time. We'll see if that actually ends up being true or not. So we have a lot of creatures in the three mana range, as you can see here. So Thirsting Shade over here in one, carrying him in four. And even more spells here in three. So I'll pile these up here. So three mana spells. Most of the time I'm going to be wanting to cast Carnage. So I'm going to put that in four, just here. Another three mana creature and another three mana creature. So basically every creature that we have is three mana. Um, except for a handful that are four. Which isn't, you know isn't the best thing that's ever happened. Um, I, I think it's I think it's reasonable sticking in the two colors rather than trying to splash a third color for a creature that's not really even worth playing. Um, creature count wise, let's check that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 17 and 7 currently. If we're looking to cut a card, I think we probably cut either Stormstrike or Flames of the Raise Boar. Um, I, I think Flames of the Raise Boar is going to be versatile. Let's see how often we're triggering Power 4 or Radar. Probably never. So potentially on the Undercity Scavenger. And I think that's going to be our only option. Um, we could Hacrobat and then Flames of the Raised Boar. So we could give the Hacrobat plus two, minus two, and then use it there. That's an option. Uh, yeah, we could potentially get there with Rakdos Trumpeter, but that's just so much mana. We're probably not doing that. Um, so... We're probably not triggering the extra clause for uh, dealing two to each other creature that player controls, but we do have a couple ways to get there. So it's probably not the end of the world. Um, so I, I think it's probably still worth running. So I think we cut the one storm strike and leave in the flames. And then we have a, a pretty controlly build that ideally tries to get in, you know, uh, wipe out your creatures and then eventually start start chipping in with uh, some of our small little guys or getting in with our menace creatures. Uh, let's see if there's anything else we want to play. So one other thing we could put in is, is an act of treason. That is, that is a possibility. I think that's basically it. So do we want to run act of treason instead of something else? I think because we're not playing a super aggressive version of this deck, we're playing something that is trying to last a little bit longer and kill some creatures and just try to clear the way. Um, I, th I think maybe there is still a case to be made for Act of Treason. Um, I do have ways, of course, with the double Undercity Scavenger 
to sacrifice creatures so I could active treason into under Undercity Scavenger uh, in the late game and, and wipe things out. I don't really know what you cut necessarily for active treason. Um, potentially a creature. We do have quite the the glut here at three mana. Um, oh, I'm sorry. These are spells, not creatures. I definitely did that in the wrong section. So our creature count then is a little bit, a little bit lower than we were thinking. And these are two. I just can't count. Yeah, these are these go in the two pile. <laughs> Ignore everything that I was saying. So all right. So we're not quite then as as in a in a glut as I was as I was imagining. I think Act of Treason is maybe is maybe better than Rakdos Trumpeter. I, li I like the idea of getting to pull off Undercity Scavenger, or Active Treason, then Undercity Scavenger. I think that that's, that's quite good. Um, let's, let's see if we can, let's, let's look at what we got here. What we got here, what we got here. Uh, so, maybe cutting in Undercity's Embrace. Or maybe cutting nothing. Maybe Act of Treason is just a bad, just a bad card to be playing. That that could also be the case. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen creatures, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight spells. All right, so active treason then is on the on the chopping block for our twenty fourth card. I think maybe we leave it out. I think when we look at it, I'd rather kill something, so deal four damage to something for six mana, than attempt to be cute for four, five, six, seven mana, as I could with the Undercity Scavenger. So I think I think the right play is not to run the active treason. Uh, no matter how much fun it might be, and I think that I think depending on the matchup, we could side out uh, one or two of the Undercity's embraces for one or two of the Act of Treasons. If we're up against like Orzov, Undercity's embrace gets a lot worse because there's going to be a lot more spirits flying around. Where I would maybe want to Act of Treason their big guy and things like that. But I think maybe as a default list. Undercity's Embrace with a combination of Bedevil and Scorchmark and things like that is pretty good. I think I think they get better in 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 more quantity. So I think this is our current list right now. Uh, again, it's so laying out our curve. So we have one mana stuff here, two mana stuff here. We have a lot at three mana. So double checking everything here is three. Again, Blade Drill goes kind of fit in this weird space, but we hope to be casting them for three mana. Maybe I'll put one there and one one at five, um, just to kind of represent our actual chances. Here, here, and here. Then four is really kind of where the power of our deck comes in, power, quote unquote. Uh, the creatures we're hoping we're gonna be able to attack with and, and do some actual damage. We've got a Blade Juggler at five and Flames of the Raised Boar at six. And I think that that's, I think that's gonna be the best that we can really hope for. So we will uh, sleeve this up and we'll try some sample hands and see how that goes.